Kobe's about to jump on a call with his manager and his agent and to talk about this upcoming UFC deal. Uh, I'm trying to get a good idea of the landscape of what's going on. And as far as what we know right now, they, um, they don't have any options for Madison Square Garden. Uh, John Jones turned down the fight. Jorge Masvidal said he had no interest in fighting Usman. Um, and then if you've got to go through the other division, so who knows now, um, Olkanowski's fighting Holloway, Khabib's fighting this weekend. This fight, 85 scheduled, 205, John not interested, and then Stipe just fought. So you kind of walk through their options, and they're, they're limited. Uh, but the way we see it is, you know, uh, you guys are – Obviously, the captains of the ship, but our our guidance would be that this week is going to be a big week. Um, they're going to start feeling the pressure. You know, they were exactly eight weeks out today um, from MSG, so this is kind of a crucial period in terms of they're scrambling right now, trying to figure out what to do. Um, so that that's kind of at least from a negotiating standpoint this week. Um, you know, we're just kind of in a holding pattern right now. I think that we're in a position of, of leverage. Uh, if, if I had to guess, they're going to come back with something uh, in a day or two because they, they need to look up. Uh, they, they, they want to publicize it. They need a poster. They need a whole bunch of things. You know, Madison Square Garden is going to start wanting something, too. And, so they're going to feel the pressure. Uh, so from our standpoint, we're happy and content where we are. Um, you know, if there's any feedback from you guys, but if not on the – Negotiating standpoint, uh, we're we're going to be in a holding pattern, and we're not going to respond to them. I like it. I, I'm, good me. I think it's a good play. So uh, at yeah, the end of the day, the, the, the deeper we get into this, the the more anxiety it's going to create for them, and the more pressure. If they don't do well when their back is in a corner. Yeah, they motherfuck. Yeah, they scream. And yeah, they try to bully, but that's actually a really good sign when they start doing that. Um, you know, so I, I think you know, just continue to stay the course. Obviously, maintain you know your your training and, and however you need to go about it mentally, because I think our our feelings on this is that they are going to get to a point where over this next week or two, they're, they're maybe start to get themselves into the danger zone. So. Um, you know, MSG is a, is a venue that they don't want to complicate or compromise the relationship. So, and they also know that who's on at the end of the day really can't carry any card, right? I mean, you, you guys contribute a whole lot of a lot. So they need you, you know, and, and I think they're, they're targeting this and, and they're, frust- they're, they're going to continue to get a little bit more frustrated. And the more frustrated they get, the better that is for us. Yeah, that's very true. I like the sound of it. Yeah. Look, and John, we talked to Colby, but they gave us two different deadlines. They had passed. The, the, you know, they had to get the first night when you guys signed with us. That was the deadline to get the deal done. We told them that wasn't going to happen. The next day, they engaged the conversation again. The deadline was uh, Friday night, Saturday night to get the deal done. We you know, went back and forth. Then they were still reaching out yesterday morning trying to get something done. So they've already passed two different deadlines that they put on, and so we're we're happy with where we are. Lloyd, Lloyd, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong too, Lloyd. I mean, our our position too is that Usman is trying to get into a deal as well. So um, you know, we don't quite know where that stands just now, but you know, they they haven't hinted or or made any impression that. Usman in. They haven't said, you know, they said that they want this fight, of course, but they haven't said anything about um, any sort of agreements on their end yet either. And for us, you know, we, we don't want to be the first one there anyway. Yeah. Especially when we're the A side and they're the B side. That's right. <laughs> I think you're the A and B side on this one. I told you. <laughs> Ariel told me that they would have about four pay per views if we were somebody else. That's true. That's <laughs> true. So anyway, I think that that's where we are negotiating. Uh, there's a couple of things I know Jeff wants to bring up real quick uh, with you guys too. Yeah. So so yeah. Um, Arden, if you could, if you could get that over to us, what we were, what we had 
last left our conversation on um, with any sort of timeline and stuff of, of just things that were owed to Colby, you know, or, or things that they didn't match. It'll be another piece of conversation. When we start getting into the numbers and, and really diving into the heat of these negotiations, we'll be ripping apart. But we're not, we're not just picking $1.5 million out of thin air because it sounds a lot. It's a seven-figure number. We don't fucking do that. We've got factual information that supports that data and and, and, and supports the money. So, and yeah, just just so you know, Jeff, not, Jeff, not to cut you off, but John, just so you know, where that number comes from is right at uh, 600,000 pay-per-view size. 600,000 pay-per-views and 500,000 base is $1.6 million. So if they were going to guarantee something for this fight, I think we're all in agreement it's not going to get the 600000 But putting those numbers there, you know, it, it, we, it, we're at a fair number for them. Um, yeah. You know, he does more than just fighting, you know. In the yeah. markets, he does everything else. And then he gets screwed on the short end of, of they don't allow them the opportunity to make money off the sponsorships where he could be raking in, you know, bringing in. Money. Our and analytics guys, whatever stuff. our analytics guys value Trump tweeting out at about three point two million dollars. The one right towards the yeah, company in advertising dollars. Yeah, like that's like what I, where I was saying alone that was worth a million dollars, and I was I was way low. <laughs> so like, like he's bringing it all in, and like like you said, Usman can't sell a car by himself, and when they book him in the biggest media market in the world. We know who's going out there and doing every TV show, every radio spot, every radio hit, you know. So it's going to be cool. So, like, they got to pay for all that stuff. And none of that stuff's cheap. And they've already screwed him. They went out and slandered him and buried him, you know, in the public. And, and what did they do? I mean, they didn't realize they were burying him and he was a seed. He was just going to grow. You know, and he got bigger and better without, without their help. So, I mean, they've done so many backhanded things that, that we owe him and they, they owe him on. You know, they got to pay him. And, they sent him out to slaughter a couple times where they put him in situations where his own life was at risk and you know he went out there for, for, the, for the good of the company and the good of you know the good of the sport you know putting his life online but none of these other people are doing that shit like one and a half million is, I think it's on the low end <laughs> like three, three million for that uh, tweet that sounds about right yeah, yeah, yeah so and uh, and to your point, uh, John, Jeff and I had those discussions. But when we go back and have a, a conversation with them, we always, at the end of the day, want to be realistic, want to be professional, uh, aggressive, but, but have a story to tell. So, so that number wasn't just picked up in there. It, it, there's some backing to it. Yeah. Let that number go. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jeff. No, yeah, so if you can get that to us, Literally sooner than later. Hopefully by the end of the end of the day, um, it'll just be good for our file. Um, and, and this is, um, you know, look, there's another avenue of the agency, right? I know a lot of focus right now is going to be on getting this fight, and we don't want to distract you by any means. But we've never worked with you outside of the octagon. You know, we, we've got a very deep network. We've got a, an artillery of of, of staff that, um, you know, are kind of excited to get the ball rolling and, and stuff that can happen outside of the octagon for you, right? So, um, I know we've kind of loosely talked about some things in the past and some things that you've done, but, you know, if you want to include in the timeline, you want to talk about it now or whatever, you know, for, for the, um, for all of our time stand, standpoint, if you guys can put together any existing deals that you have right now that you're under contract with, any any companies that you have been engaged with that you think, you know, uh, you have a chance of doing something, you're, you're down the road, you haven't finalized, get us that. And any companies that you would want to work with that you know of. And, uh, you know, if there's any sort of markets that, that, you know, are intriguing to you, let us know that because, you know, our office is, uh, out on vacation today, but tomorrow uh, we plan on dumping a, a pile of shit on them and saying, "All right, these fuckers, hit the phone because we got we got to get to work." Um, as we told told you guys earlier, man, we want to start padding that you know outside the octagon account, you know, for you. Um, the other thing is, I don't know if you have this already. Anybody talked to you? I don't know how you how you collect your funds if it's worth you know. 
starting an LLC, we can help, you know, formulate the LLC for you, you know, and, and kind of separate different funds, whether it's, you know, through your salary, through your fights, through your, through your outside the octagon type of revenue that comes in. You know, start to just streamline things and, and from a tax standpoint, start to, you know, uh, optimize your earnings and, and allocate your stuff to your corporation and your business. Because as we finished the phone call the other day, you are kind of just starting now to scratch the surface, and you know over the next six months to a year, while you you're, you're kind of on the map now, right? And you're doing some great things. We're anticipating an explosion, so um, you know we got to start getting those things in line for you as well. For sure, I like that. I have <clears throat> I have an LLC already, so you know. I wouldn't need okay. I, I wouldn't need that, but definitely looking forward to tackling you know the endorsement market and uh, trying to find out you know aligning with you know companies and brands that love the Trumps because obviously a lot of these companies when they look at my Instagram they're gonna see that I got a, a red a red hat on all the time that says four words on it that says make America great again so if they have a problem with that those four words then I got a problem with them and obviously they don't want to have a problem with me but you know we got to find people that have, that are cool with it. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a big problem. So, I, I guess, are you guys able to, to do that and put that? That's, that's, a little, that's probably the most homework we'll end up giving you, and then we'll let you guys see. Yeah, take care of it right now for you. Yeah, that's, okay. that's easy yeah, money. Thank you. All right, well, if we hear uh, back from them, we'll be in touch, uh, do another one of these. Thank you guys for being close to your phone for the last couple of days. And uh, it should be, a, should be a fun week. I'm looking forward to it, boys. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Happy holidays. All right. See you guys soon. Take care. That was the agency and the, and your other managers? Yeah, that was uh, my buddy, John Hartnett, who's helped me out, kind of guide me and lead me in my career at American Top Team. And then that was my new MMA agency for talent and uh, endorsements, Balangy nice. Agency. So. Those guys are... They should be able to get you some sponsorships pretty quick. Oh, dude, easy. Because the way they pitch it, you know, it's like, okay, you want you want these high-level baseball pre- players that we have, you know, that are, that are superstars, okay. Well, you need it needs to be a trickle effect, and you need to pay out our top fighters, too. So they can leverage to these businesses. Okay, we're going to give you a Colby, but we're also going to give you these baseball players. We're also going to give you these football players. And, and it's like a trickle-down effect, you know? Yeah. So... They're the, they're, the, they're the top company, man. There's no company out there like them that does business like them. They're, they they're sound pretty good. good. Yeah, they're good. They talk well. Yeah, talk very well. They all seem like they're on the same page. None of them are trying to like talk you out of committing to something less. Yeah. They're all saying they're going to try to get you what you deserve. Yeah. That's and, good. I, and I like that because, uh, you know, they're not, they're not afraid to put their foot down and, and demand what we deserve, you know. And this is what's deserved, man. I, I'm a, I'm a seven-figure paycheck fighter now. I'm, you got to pay me at least a million, you know. It's just it's just what I do to the sport. You know, I'm the top face of the sport right now. I'm selling the sport. The, I'm selling the brand of UFC. I'm selling everything. And no one talks like I talk. No one is embraces the camera like I embrace the camera. So... You know, they're either going to pay up or, you know, I'm willing to sit out and stand up for what I believe in. And, that, and that's a message for a lot of people in the world, dude, like, that are out there and they're like, man, like, I believe in this, but I can't stand up for it because everybody will look at me and they'll think of me wrong. And I don't want them to look at me and think of me any different because this is what I believe in. No, that's not how I think. I think I'm going to put my foot down and to all the people out there, you should stand up for what you believe in and don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. And don't be afraid of what others are going to think of you because that's your opinion and what you believe in. And they have their own opinion and they believe in something else. Mm-hmm. So if we fight at MSG, we fight at MSG. I'm going to make the garden great again and I'm going to knock Cameron Usman out. If they don't pay up, then you know we'll, we'll sit, we'll reevaluate, we'll reassess and... We'll see what happens, but, you know, the UFC is going to come running sooner or later. No one's going to tune into a product that's a losing product. Everybody loves a winner. Like me and you, we're addicted to winning. That's our drug of choice is winning. For, for these other fighters, they're losers, and, and they don't they don't attract, and they don't draw like we draw. All we do is win, brother. That's all we do. That's we're, why we're, we're never going to get tired of winning. That's why we undefeated out here on these streets, bro. That's right. Undefeated, undisputed. <laughs> Can't be stopped.
like Bob Marley said, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Keep having fun, man. We'll just keep fucking training. Keep getting better. Everything. Yes. Yeah. It's not about the money. It's about the love of the sport, right? The life. It's about the love of a life. boxing, hitting that fucking bat. Life is tight, man. Yeah. Training. Yeah. The real. The life. Relax, go to the spa, get some massages. Training. Chicas. Do cardio in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. With clinch. <laughs> With the <laughs> 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 no union in fighting. But boxing more more money, eh? We MMA. Way more money. Way more money. Way more money. That's a, I wanna go over and take a boxing fight. <laughs> Canelo. Yeah. Let's go for That's Canelo. That's what I was saying, Canelo. <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> he, he's on that tainted that tainted Mexican meat. You, so. you saw he popped for the steroid test, right? Canelo, yeah. Yeah. Tainted, tainted Mexican meat, man. He ain't ready for this all-American beef, man. Let's go fight with Canelo. Let's do it. Maybe you fight. Let's do it. The UFC brought all the competitors. All the competitors. And the biggest ones. They what's some? I didn't get the Muhammad Ali Act. What is Muhammad that? Ali Act was that it gives the fighter and promoter an even revenue split, so 50-50 down the center. So it gives the if, fighter through the gate. If they make a hundred million through the gate, to the paper of sales, to the merchandise, a hundred million dollars, it has to be an even revenue split. Fifty million for the fighter, fifty million for the boxer. Mm. In the UFC, they don't do that. They take all the merchandise, they take all the pay-per-views, they take all the gate, they keep all the money, and then they just they give whatever they want to the UFC. They're like, okay, or the, to the fighter, here's a hundred thousand. We think that's worthy, mm. even though they made a hundred million. But in boxing, they wouldn't be able to do that because there's an act that protects that. And that happened three, four years ago? What, the, the Muhammad Ali? Yeah. In MMA, they tried to bring it back around like four or five years ago. But they, UFC is so powerful and they have so much money, they, they bought the most expensive lawyers to block that act and make sure that act didn't come That's in. That's crazy. That's crazy, right? That's so crazy. Crazy. And the fight, a lot of fighters don't even know about that. I know that inside information because, like, you know, I know every, a lot of people, you know. Okay, it's coming. <laughs> about the, the California hurricane. California hurricane. California hurricane. What's up? We coming, baby. <laughs> <laughs> to the top. <laughs> There's only one way. Only one way. That's cool that you use it for your uh, for your cut. Fuck, I was putting it all, all, all on it every night before I went to bed. Eight hours of sleeping on my iPhone before I woke up for training. Because it has the lavender in it, right? Yeah, it has oh, lavender and it has something else. I have the bottle in here, actually. That is crazy, boy. Yeah, we didn't make it for cuts, but... It's cool that it works for it. But a doctor told you who... The eucalyptus. The uh, eucalyptus oil is good, too. But yeah, the lavender oil is like a really good healing property. And then coconut oil, that's a really good healing property as well. I was looking online, I was like, what's the best way to, to heal a cut? Like a deep cut, and, and they were saying like all these different... You know, uh, chemicals and, and oils and stuff, and then one of them was coconut oil and lavender oil. And I was like, oh man, and it's in the CBD, all of them together. Let's put it on. <laughs> and then just magically, like it didn't open up in the cut, and it healed in record time. And everybody was like, man, we can't believe how he how fast it healed. You, that wasn't supposed to heal like that for like six to eight weeks, and it was a miracle in two and a half weeks. Wow, two and a half weeks before the fight, you got that. Two and a half weeks before the fight, I got that. Fifteen stitches. 15 stitches. 15. 15. Dang. That's yeah. a lot of stitches on the eyebrow. Very yeah, intense. A lot. It's a scary place. And and even the doctor, the plastic surgeon was like, uh, if you fight, you're potentially risking losing your eyelid if you get punched in it enough, or you're potentially uh, risking having it cut all the way down the side of your face if you get hit in it a couple times. So having those thoughts going through your mind, you're like, wow, man, you're putting a lot on the line. No down, eh? No. Keep that straight. Thing. Yeah, it's only Thing. one Thing. touch you and tough open. Yeah. Easy. Easy one for open. Easy though. Days I just want to get in the pocket. <laughs> in in the close range, you know? Like I don't know. Why do you think like that? I'm I'm like angles, you know, footwork. Moving, moving, angle. Find the right right moment. You know, find your moment. Intelligent. Intelligent, yeah. 
it's good. Jeez. This is a difference, eh? Other? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> big power. Those fucking arms. Power is big power. Big power. Yeah, it is, bro. What would you think is the biggest reason for that? The bigger reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A lot of cardio, <laughs> bro. A lot of cardio. <laughs> a lot of cardio. <laughs> Late night. Late night. Hours and hours. Hours and hours. Hours and hours. Late night. <laughs> You like chicks? Yeah. Chicks. 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 Yeah. Chicks. Like, you know, chicks. You like chicks? Yeah. You like? <laughs> 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 the, 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 the woman chicks. <laughs> yeah. You like chicks, huh? For what? You, you, for what? For what? For what? Big titties, big ass. Big ass. Yeah? You having fun with that? I fun one, yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, well, these are the ones, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. other love. Yeah, yeah. yes. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> oh, my dog. <laughs> <laughs>